In this lecture, I want to introduce you to how economists think about preferences. In fact, really, economists want to describe behavior and how people behave in responses to changes in opportunities. From that perspective, preferences tend to be a bit of a nuisance. We like to have some reasonable ideas about what preferences are, but we want to be agnostic. We don't want to say, you have to have these preferences. You, you have to believe this about the world. The first assumption is that more of goods is better. Now, that seems just tautological. Something is what we would call a good, it's obviously got to be better. So that, that one's kind of hard to disagree with. The second one is, people don't say, I don't know. Uh, in specifically, I mean, you, you do say, I don't know. In, in English, you say, I don't know. But what you really mean when you say, I don't know, is that you just you don't have enough information. If I give you enough information in the context of this problem, you don't say, I don't know. For example, suppose that we're choosing between two types of goods. I'm going to call one good taste, and the other good I'm going to call health. We make this trade-off between taste and health every day when we go ahead and choose a meal. Um, but if I told you that you had to choose between this much health and that much taste, and this much health and that much taste, and I asked you which do you prefer, you would say one of three things. You would say, I prefer, and let's label this as bundle A or bundle B. It's like, I either prefer bundle A to bundle B. I either prefer bundle B to bundle A, or I'm indifferent. When we're thinking about choices between bundles of goods, and that's actually where we'll be going, we're going to want to be able to say something about how people would order and or rank various bundles of goods. And so, in order to say that, we need to assume that people don't just say, well, I don't know. You might say, well, I don't know, I don't care, just flip a coin. In that case, we don't interpret that as I don't know, we interpret that as I'm indifferent. And that is one of the choices, as not actually not knowing what your preferences are. Uh, this is a property known as completeness. So then the third assumption that we make is that preferences are consistent. Now if I, to get at the idea of consistency here, if I add a third bundle here, and I say, I ask you if you prefer A, if you prefer A or C, uh, if, if you prefer B or A, if you, if you prefer B or C, you can't say that you prefer C to A, A to B and then B to C, because then if you go ahead and follow that train of logic through, you would have to prefer C to C, and that's an inconsistency. We want to rule out those sorts of inconsistencies. Um, mathematically and in economics, this is a property known as transitivity. And so again, this one's not really too much of a stretch. Uh, we're not really imposing too much structure on how people behave here. Um, and really, we feel pretty comfortable assuming transitivity. Now, the fourth one that we're going to, uh, going to assume is that people prefer some goods in moderation to all of one good. We, we like to mix goods. We like to have, uh, we like to take a variety of goods. For example, you wouldn't spend all of your money on shoes. And, and if the price goes up, uh, switch entirely to spending all of your money on socks and nothing else. Um, that's, that's the idea here. We have some form of moderation, and in fact, this holds globally, and what that means is that if I draw a straight line between two points in this bundle space, and I ask, do you prefer bundle D, 
you say yes. What that means is that uh, that if you uh, if you were indifferent between A and B, and I draw uh, two points, I, I draw a straight line between those two points. You prefer all the points that are moderation between A and B because it allows you to mix uh, mix your uh, consumption a little bit better. Uh, Again, this is, this is more structure than, than you think that we should be opposing here. Uh, it turns out that it's empirically justified. And one way to, uh, uh, to indicate this graphically, or the way that we will indicate this graphically, is through an indifference curve. Through all of the bundles, such that A uh, is indifferent with that other bundle, B, in this case, we can draw a line in this plane. And if we draw a line in this plane, any bundle along here could be said to be equivalent to A or B. They're all, uh, you can be indifferent between those bundles. Notice that the way we've drawn this, we can say that we can sort of think about this as a map. If you think about sort of a, uh, we can draw it in difference curves kind of through all, all of these different points here. And we can think about this as a map. Think about if you were looking on a, uh, a map uh, with a mountain and you're thinking about where these are elevations and you're moving your way up a mountain here. Um, if, if you're moving your way up a mountain, um, this would tell you that this is at some height and that this is at another height and that this is at another height. And in fact, we'll think about those heights as the level of happiness. Remember when we said that more of goods is better, uh, we were able to say that as we move up and to the right, that's going to be better. And so that's how we'll go ahead and read this. If we're down and to the left, that's going to be worse. So if I draw an indifference curve through this plane, through A and B, and I ask myself, is bundle E better or worse than A? Well, I have an answer now, because it is above and to the right of the indifference curve of A. And so we know that E is preferred to A. If I ask myself, is E preferred to B? Well, it's the exact same answer, because I'm indifferent. According to this line here, I'm indifferent between A and B. And E is better than A uh, because it's up and to the right, and it's higher up on the mountain, and so we prefer E to either A or B. We can again, just by drawing these indifference curves, we can think about ordering all of these different bundles on the map, and that's really how we want to think about um, how we want to think about preferences and how we want to um, draw indifference curves and interpret the drawing of indifference curves.